Hello there. Yes, I'm wearing a bucker hat for this wire reaction. As you can see, I haven't even been bothered to shave. Listen, I'm still mourning Proposition Joe, okay? This guy, he was a slick motherfudger, don't get me wrong. Um, I feel like earlier on, I remember in my um, early wire days, my er early wire days, it sounds like I was reacting for this show for like a few years, but it's only been a few months, ladies and gentlemen. That's the upload rate we have here. Um, but it feels like I think in season one or two, I was really saying, this guy's a, you know, he's a snake, man. He's gone behind Avon and Shinga. But I grew to like him so much. And I just feel like, man, I thought you would have seen Marlo coming. I thought you were smarter than that. And I think, you know, season one to two to three to four showed that Proposition Joe was smarter than that. But I don't know. Season five has been crazy at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's been really good, in my opinion. I don't, I don't see the hate it is getting. Yes, a few choices are questionable. But, like, it's still better than a lot of television out there. Season five is absolutely fantastic. And we're here to react to episode six, ladies and gentlemen, today. I've just been talking nonstop for a minute. It's your boy, Ellie Moses, your 24-year-old. Lauren Phil should he for show you absolutely shitty his shot. Today, like I said, we have to episode six of The Wire season five. This one's titled The Dickensian uh, Aspect. Let's get into the reaction. Let's have some fun with this thing. Let's absolutely smash it. Let's go. That's the apartment outside the shootout, yep. Marlo's boy. Oh, so Omar's boy. What the heck? There's always the killer at the scene, no matter what. Or someone who's... Oh, no, I thought that was Marlo from behind. Oh, my gosh. I could, oh, my... I'm so sorry. That, that figure looked like Marlo's head from behind. But there's always someone who knows at the scene, okay? <laughs> Oh, them stair shots. Wire, baby. Flashbacks to season one. McNulty and Daniels. Gotta be somewhere. You wanna keep going? Officer Smith, ma'am. We're looking for a man went after a woman last night at Esperanza Apartments. The one's right behind you. you. Heard anything unusual? No, sorry. Oh my God, that's terrible. Is the woman all right? Huh? The woman. Is she alright? Yeah. Yeah, she good. <laughs> Yo, no offense. Uh, are there any black people with the last name Smith? Like, like, sure. <laughs> like, you could have picked a different name than Smith, man. Like, come on. The John Doe of names. Like, are you serious? <laughs> officer, oh man, he was looking fire on that suit, I'm not gonna lie. But really, an officer with the, you know, diamond, my guy didn't even, you know, bother to take out the diamond earrings. Like, that is the flyest police officer. Actually, no, not the flyest police officer. That's gotta go to Mike Lowry. Come on, man. But. <laughs> oh, man. We don't have anyone by that name. He was counting, you know, how probably messed up his name. Dog, he won't use his name Omar even yeah, if he admitted he himself. No one with that type of injury came in last night. They doing the rounds, man. Not a goddamn thing. Been in every trash can, dumpster, vacant for three blocks round. He's Nothing. the Dark Knight, man. Shut down the source. <laughs> the source. <laughs> Marlo, I want to meet. So what you want us to do? Yo, Omar really is him, man. He really is him. Which one? Don't seem possible. Don't. Some Spider Man shit there. <laughs> <laughs> we missed our shot. You had the up on him. Us. And you missed his shot. I feel like that's the one person he needs to tame still, Marlo. It's Omar. The last individual to regain full control, I guess. Um, that one individual to, you know, he's got to think to himself, I don't have to look um, behind me. Like, Omar's that one individual that's stopping Marlo from looking to the future. 
I've still got that one nagging little pissed. If you have a problem with this, I understand completely. Freeman. Bro, I've had a problem. I usually my staff tries to keep sharp objects out of my hands. Aha, nudge nudge wind tweak. Carcetti is cutting a red ribbon, ladies and gentlemen. You know what, uh, it all starts Reference to McNulty. Tommy D'Alessandro. Well, today it is my administration's turn to lay claim to the middle branch of the Patapsco and what will soon become known as New Westport. No way. They got Nikki and the other guy, other boys back. Of our great city. Thank you. That's not good for the dock workers. Say goodbye to local yeah. point. Fuck you, Krawcheck! Yeah. yeah! Fuck you! Greet that motherfucker. Fuck you for tearing down the port of Baltimore and selling it to some yuppie assholes from Washington. Yo, nice cameo, Nicky. Hey, right. fair play, man. Yeah, Voicing his concerns. It's nobody, Mr. Mayor. It's nobody at all. Oh, yeah? Nobody at all? They were very important in season two. That says a lot about the higher ups and what they think about the people of Baltimore, the working class, huh? Nobody at all. And Omar out here, really the Lone Ranger, man. Watch Marlo pin Proposition Joe's death on Omar too. Like, tell the co-op that. And no one from the co-op is going to be willing to speak out because of the, Mar uh, the muscle Marlo has. Despite him, you know, being a little bit iffy at the attendances. My guess is broken ankle. Oh. He just went to like the sort of janitor's room of the same apartment block. They thought he ran away. You happy now, bitch? I am content, yes. You called the reporter, huh? That asshole's making up his own shit. <laughs> Two idiots Crack making up their own shit. This afternoon. I'm gonna be shoveling so much money at my bullshit, it'll make your head spin. What's with all the casework? Bodies from the vacants. Some still missing lab work. Pathetic. And some of them have been worked pretty good. You know what, Jimmy? I'm gonna go back to the beginning and work every one of them again. Back to square one. And you know why? Because I'm a murder police. I work murders. I don't fuck with no make-believe. I don't jerk shit around. I catch a murder, and I work it. Working this shit like I'm supposed to. No. Nope. Let me know if you need anything, all right? A car, some OT, some lab work, anything you need. Because in three or four hours, the money's gonna flow on my case. Whenever you need bunk, I'm probably gonna have more of it than even Lester could use. This man's arrogance at the moment is... I mean, if it's an overnight thing, I couldn't get it for tomorrow, but the next day, sure. That's great. That could be the perfect follow. I'll speak to Gus. Also, Scott, we've been taking calls from some of the national networks and cable outlets. They're looking for you to go on camera. Me? On television? I'd avoid the locals, but if you can do the national stuff in a responsible manner... Sure, yeah. I mean, I'm just not all that comfortable having myself in the center of the story like this. Of course not. But there is a way of handling this responsibly, I think. Why do I, why do I feel like... Scott wants the spotlight and is playing it off, you know, like he doesn't. Like he's just saying, oh, I don't know if I want, like, you know, y you get what I mean? Like, I just feel like, you know, inside he's like, yes, yes, I've done it. I've done it. They, I've got I've got them, you know, praising my work. Um, and he's still playing the nervous shy guy, um, you know, that ain't ready for national TV and stuff like that. Or maybe, you know, he's afraid to freaking get... Found out. Yeah, I was looking for the word there for some reason. Maybe he's afraid to get freaking found out. Um, and I don't know if I'm sort of reaching here, but is there some sort of inherent favoritism towards Scott because he's the white guy? And the, those two individuals seem to, you know, be praising his work so much um, and, you know, overlooking everything. Um, while the other guy, I forgot his name, um, oh, Haynes, Haynes, I think. I don't know. I just feel like he gets put down for, you know, asking the right questions. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just feel like there's some favoritism here towards Scott from the higher ups. Just remember you're an ambassador for the paper. Yeah. How about that? Homelessness. 
Our coverage should reflect the uh, Dickensian aspect of the homeless, the human element. Oh, Dickensian. Why did I say Dickensian? Oh Scott, my gosh. You your education project. So, we need to get so him sorry. I don't see the, uh, the school project as yielding the same kind of impact as our attention to homelessness can. And these murders, the phone call to our reporter, really opens up the issue, don't you think? Well, yeah, but... From now to the end of the year, let's focus not only on covering the murders, but on the, uh, the nature of homelessness yeah. itself. The Dickensian aspect of it, yeah. I've reached a point, Detective Sid Norm. Sid Nor. <laughs> I no longer have the time or patience left to address myself to the needs of the system within which we work. I'm tired. You gonna quit? Not yet. Not just yet. So what are you talking about? When they took us off Marlowe this last time, when they said they couldn't pay for further investigation, I regarded that decision as illegitimate. <laughs> illegitimate. And so I'm responding in kind. I'm going to press the case against Marvel Stanfield without regard to the usual rules. I know, I know, I know Lester and McNulty are both doing illegitimate things, but why does it come across, like, I just feel like it comes across that Lester is doing it more legitimately than McNulty. <laughs> He's doing the illegitimate thing more legitimate. <laughs> like, I don't know. You guys are probably laughing at that remark right there. Um, but I just feel like Lester, I think, comes across, you know, as, I don't know. I just, I less bullshitty than McNulty, obviously, because I think we've seen McNulty's antics from day one um, or episode one of the show. So I think Lester, you know, comes across as, you know, just a more legitimate um, police officer. I don't feel like he's gloating. Um, in terms of the case, I just feel like, yeah, he takes pride in it, but like, yeah, I just don't feel like he rubs it in everyone's face. He doesn't parade himself around, um, as the top dog and above everyone else, um, as McNulty does. But I still think Lester thinks that of himself. I don't know. I'm running an illegal wiretap on Marlo Stanfield's cell phone. Fuck Lester. <laughs> if you have a problem with this, I understand completely. And I urge you to get as far fucking away from me as you can. See, McNulty would just say, join, you have no choice. At least Lester's giving him a decision. <laughs> like, and acknowledging what they're doing is effed up. This is good learning experience. I remember I talked about the, you know, master-apprentice relationship between these two. And, um, I'm trying to pause as much urge to miss I'm not any important water, dialogue. And, but I love... This last time, in which we were. I love the framing here, um, with that sort of little pillar. Not, yet. Not just yet. So what are you talking about? When they took us off Marlowe this last time, I'm gonna press. Because as, as right here, right here. Sorry to keep pausing and you know. Um, see how Lester walks away here. Um, and the camera slowly pans around from left to right in sort of like a circular motion. I just love that right here, right there, how Sidna is behind uh, or towards the right hand side of the pillar. Um, and that pillar right there is sort of like that. Um, I don't know if it's meant to represent Sidna's, uh, Sidna's uh, conflicting emotions at the moment. You know, that barrier that prevents him from crossing to the world of illegitimate police work. Um, but even then, I feel like he's already been a part of illegitimate police work. I remember in season one, um, when Presbaluski hit the kid with the gun in the eye socket. Um, I think it was Sidna... Presbaluski and Herc on that detail right there at night doing the surveillance. And I know that takes it a while back. Um, so cor like, correct me if my memory's wrong. Um, so he hasn't been sort of like uh, completely um, immune to illegit illegitimate police activity, Sidna. But like, I feel like this is crossing another level. And he ends up crossing that barrier right there as, you know, Lester walks in to the world of illegal police activity. Um, untapped a sort of like... Less illegitimate wire stop this i understand completely and i urge you to get as far fucking away from <laughs> me as you can instead of getting further away my guy walks into it he walks into mordor you know sidno he doesn't get many um scenes this show but i feel like this is the highlight right here of this scene i like it i've talked so much at the beginning of this episode but hopefully it's um uh, Worthy talk, pertinent talk. You remember this one here? 
backed away from jacking the boy up. Out of respect for that goofy motherfucker, Prince Belusky. <laughs> Wonder what the young man might tell me a year later, though. Oh, we're gonna get Randy this episode? What the fuck is this? Vernon here did a search warrant on his dead guy's appliance store. Pulled all that out of the desk drawer. Mm -hmm. Remember when Narcotics indicted Charlie Berman last year? Motherfucker ran a couple days before the raids. Still on the way. The sealed indictments are all in there. Every one of them. Who don't we trust at the courthouse? That's how Prop Joe was able to get all that information and understand or like be aware of which, you know, politicians were going to get indicted. After more than a year? That they are. Tell me they're talking in code, Lester. I want to go to jail for snatching something better than Marlowe stamping his lunch order. There's no code that I can tell. I got a half dozen calls, all routine. No drug talk, no numbers, no times. Nothing but what they seem. So he ain't doing business with the phone then. So take this mess down. Let's get the fuck out of here. I also have five calls, 30 to 40 seconds duration. Each one picked up on the first ring, each one with nothing whatsoever said between parties. You see, when they talk is bullshit. <laughs> Their calls where no one says a thing. That's the Vondas. seconds without conversation. That's the Vondas lesson. Yep, you're a part of the game, my friend. That's, that's it. Sidna, you know, trying to talk Lester out of it in this room or saying get the F away from it. It was too late. Once you're part of the game, you're part of the game. All right? <laughs> you can never leave the game. There's always going to be something to tie you into it. Risks. I'm in. If it makes the fucking case, I'm in all the way. Another so Avenger recruited. You talking dirt? No. Lester, fuck. Marlo's not going to talk dirt on the phone. But there's something to this. I just haven't figured it out. Homeless How does that case tangling with this? Hard to explain. <laughs> Best you not know. <laughs> Remember what the DNC folks told me two years ago? What I needed to do to take the state house? Build something downtown and stick your name on it. Get the crime to go down and stay away from schools. And keep my boyish good looks. One out of four ain't bad. Jesus. Did we have to schedule this the same day as New Westport? My good news isn't even gonna make the fun of the local section. The ribbon cutting was scattered two weeks ago. This homeless thing no one saw coming. Carcetti out here cutting ribbons. McNulty out here tying them up. First of all, I'm surprised to see so much media here. A press event held earlier today to announce the revitalization of yet another part of our city was not so well attended. Yeah, no one cares. That media attention is always focusing on the negatives when it comes to Baltimore, but you guys aren't around when we're making real progress. Nevertheless, I'm glad to see so many of you here. Some of you representing not just our local media, but national attention to this problem. Thank you for caring enough about our most vulnerable citizens to address yourselves to this tragedy. Our homeless citizens, those who have fallen through the cracks of our society, those who command the least of our attentions and efforts, they seemingly have little to endear themselves to politicians. They don't vote, by and large. They don't contribute to campaigns. They offer little to a city's tax base. And to the extent that our government is made aware of their existence, it responds by trying to mitigate the damage done by their presence. We open a food bank here, a shelter there. We try to move them away from downtown, away from our communal areas, away from our schools. No, Kakeri can speak, man. If you were to judge our society by the manner in which we treat those lost on our streets, we would have cause to be shamed. Well, I am, God forgive me, a politician. <laughs> but I am also someone who ran for public office because I believe that there is a different way of governing. And I believe that in the end, we will be judged not by the efforts we make on behalf of those who vote for us or those who contribute to our campaigns or those who provide for our tax base. I believe that we will be judged by what we provide to the weakest and most vulnerable. That is the test. That is my test. Where was this all season? He's killing homeless men in this city. They are taking the lives of fellow citizens who do not have the means or the strength to properly protect themselves. They will be stopped. We will do everything in our power to stop them. You have my word on this. Sir, you Sir, you Sir, Sir. Yo, they got CNN, NBC. This is, this, is, this is bad for McNulty and Templeton, in my opinion. Like, you know what? I hope they get found out. The fact that this is getting national coverage is going to put more pressure on them to prolong this story or even, you know, um, yeah, give it the longevity it has and give it the legitimacy they're trying to, you know, portray it has. I don't think McNulty ever foresaw that this case was going to get national sort of coverage. Even Templeton, this is bad for his career. It's bad for McNulty's.
Um, and I wonder if this episode, both of them may start getting found out or there might be cracks in their sort of stories per se. Um, I don't think McNulty ever intended to this for this to blow up the way it did, which sucks that the murder of homeless people is getting blown up the way it is and the murder of 22 you know, bodies found in vacants is not. That just says a lot. Like, what? I want to assure the public hypocrisy. That doing everything possible in our power to apprehend this subject. Homicide detectives are working around the clock. District officers are in contact with the agencies that work with the homeless. I cannot go into specifics of the investigation, but with that caveat, I will take questions. <laughs> My guy said working around the clock like they're getting paid overtime. Sure, sure. Connection between these murders and those in the vacant homes last year? No connection. Commissioner, Commissioner, are you asking the FBI to join in the investigation? I think Deputy Commissioner Daniels is in a position to elaborate on that. Wow. That look he gave him. That look he gave him is like, Mother fudger, you really threw me into this? I wasn't prepared to speak. We'll take whatever help is offered. Certainly our detectives will work closely with the behavioral analysis unit at Quantico. Deputy, even with all the resources at your disposal, isn't it extremely difficult to catch a serial killer? Our ability to secure genetic material and the growing DNA data bank are assets unavailable to us even a few years ago. And our ability to effectively use resources has been increased with the aid of sophisticated computer software. And of course, we have some of the best criminal investigators in the nation working 24-7. As the mayor made very clear a moment ago, this is now a priority for the department. That's a good answer under the pressure, man. I'm not at liberty to go into any details of the investigation at this time. That is a good answer under the pressure. My guy did not, you know, capitulate. Want me to hang? He did not crumble. Son, the thing about murder is it never goes off the books. I mean, we work on it for weeks, months, years. We keep on with it until finally someone decides they've had enough. Until we get the right word from the right person and you know what happens then. Why is Randy trying to act tough when we know he really isn't? Like he's giving Bunk the Michael treatment right here. He ain't even looking him in the eye. When the case does go down, all those people who kept quiet about it, who lied about it, all of them who thought it wasn't coming back on them, they end up catching a charge and they get time behind it. Time, huh? You gonna give me time? If you know something about that boy Lex getting shot, now is your last chance to speak to that. You gave a statement last year. Why don't you promise to get me out of here? That's what y'all do, ain't it? Lie to dumbass niggas. Not you, Randy, man. It's not you. Don't sell out. No, y'all need to get this police out of my face before I bank his ass. Damn it! So many character decisions this hand. season, man. Shit, I was just following the mayor's lead. He wants a full court press, man. <laughs> we can add a detective or two, and you can ask patrol to concentrate on posts where vagrants congregate. But other than that, deputy, the cupboard is bare. But Kakiri said, make no mistake, he wants us to solve the murders. He just doesn't want it to cost. Don't look so shocked. More with less. The big dogs now. <laughs> More with less. Is it enough that we're up on the killer's cell phone? I would think that you could track him on the GPS chip alone. He's using a burner. And we suspect he's taking out the battery between calls. Damn, and Judge. To stop on all that medication now? Phones. Calling the reporter from a new number. So you... Until we get the sense that your suspect is changing phones, I'm not inclined to look with favor on tapping the Baltimore Sun's telecommunication. Well, we're afraid to piss them off? Never pick a fight with anyone who buys ink by the mouthful. <laughs> 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 they ain't do a lot of damage. They ain't do a lot of damage with that ink. <laughs> the ink is more powerful than the gun, man. How many enemies do you need? Deputy.
Where did you get all this? Darling, you do not want to know. <laughs> Is that the indictments? Darling. What's up with you? Got all 22 out the draw, huh? Working the whole mess at once. I'm trying to see him fresh. 25. My triple. Comes back to Marlowe and his people. For sure. Good informant tells me so. Says one of my Vicks was uh, talking bad about Mr. Stanfield, who took it personal. Killed him, oh. his girl, his mother. Oh. Left little kids alive, so I guess they ain't all bad. People <laughs> are so scared of this motherfucker, I can't get close to an eyewitness on any of them. Where you at with the rest of these cases? You know, we don't even have lab work on 14 of these bodies. A year later, I'm still walking in written requests to Lance and watching him just... 14, a year school. later. I people to call the news report on that shit. I am not... <laughs> <laughs> well, what would the bunk do? Take no full fucking answer? The bunk. We had cutbacks. You know that. We lost three or four trace examiners. Listen, I want to say, and I said it last episode, I know this season is shorter. And the fact that it's shorter sucks, okay, big time. Because I feel like this season has been quality television. Um, apart from the, I don't know, I just feel like they went, you know, in a new direction with McNulty and Lester's character. Someone hates McNulty in the writer's room, all right? For them, is it David Simon? Uh, someone, I think he hates him, man, for him to do that to him this season. Um, but who knows? I think I posed the question last episode. This could happen in real life, like... Who knows? Obviously, the news fabricates stuff. Everyone knows that you'd be, you know, I think, I feel like you'd be ignorant to think not, like, but, like, I feel like the police can maybe do stuff like that as well. Um, And I like that. I don't know if it's too far-fetched. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I just feel like, you know what? The way, with the, the way the show is portraying it with, you know, McNulty, obviously, fabricating the murders to get what he wants out of um the politicians and stuff like that i i love how the show's dealing with it i love how the show's dealing it dealing with the homeless situation um from all angles from all sides the news side the political side the police side how everyone responds to it i just feel like the way it's dealing like the situation itself might be far-fetched with mcnulty obviously um doing what he's doing um lester as well um but i just feel like the way they're dealing with the problem or the way people are responding to the problem is very in fact real i don't know i just feel like that's great um i just feel like the way it's depicting it is real like i i, I don't know i just think that um and like i was saying before i know this season is short which sucks like that three episodes means a lot um, but I feel like the last two episodes have been edited so well, in my opinion. I just feel like they're covering so much ground. They're doing more with less. Exactly. They're doing more with less, in my opinion. It's great. I don't know where this energy is coming from me today. Four months of blood samples. Did you know that? Four months of evidence, and they still haven't replaced my damn icebox. My heart pumps purple piss for you. <laughs> my God, the worst mass murder in B-more history, and you can't get the trace work back to me inside of a year? Come on, Ron! Look, can't go to the press. I mean, heads will roll if this gets... Oh, out. that's bad, it yeah. It isn't anyone's fault. And in fact, it's a little bit on you, in, in, in a way. What the fuck you say? Whoa! After Annette took retirement, the case work got backed up worse than ever right well we put in to fill the lab assistant slot but with all these cutbacks the best they could give us was a temp a temp yeah no medical no pension that's a, bad a temp hire to get us over that's oh, bad wow. that's Let's bad show you something so what's the problem well in the initial paperwork you guys wrote out all 22 cc numbers right right but in the supplemental request you put all the incidents under the initial cc and then you wrote at all remember so she didn't know what at all meant and she sorted everything under the single complaint number. you don't fucking mean yeah we have no idea which one of your scenes any of this shit came from how do we you carelessly hire this role <clears throat> actually uh, except for this she's been a pretty good employee the negligence on display here Pretty good employee, huh? We 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 can't afford pretty good in forensics. We need exceptional. What? Surveillance teams, two each on twelve-hour shifts, needing to set up on certain locations common to our cases. Come on, Jay. You heard the man. This case is a red ball. That it is. You can have Greg's if you want. The last time I offered her up, you kicked her back to her own casework. Other than a second detective, you were on your own. 
So it's all bullshit. I don't know. I thought the mayor gave a very nice speech. I, for one, was moved. Much like the bull to which you just referred. <laughs> McNaughty thought the mayor was going to hand it all down. He said the right things on camera, but behind the scene? Nah, man. Tell you one thing. What's that? Motherfucker who's got the connect. He the one that did Joe. Oh, no doubt. Well, it is Marlo who has the connect now. That's an empty seat, my man. That's an empty... Oh, all right. Where's Slim Charles? Oh, Slim Charles ain't here too, is he? No. Y'all know the co-op took some hits. Joe, hungry man, good people, especially Joe. They passed him with oh, that's Slim Slim. Blooded. Sorry, it's hungry man. What thinking. So I'm going to put it out there. I'm responsible. We can so back, made a move on Omar with Joe's approval. Faggot ain't have hard enough to come at me, so he come at those close to me. Now, I'm doubling the bounty. Hundred large for a whiff of that dick suck. 250 for his head. See, I think Slim Charles here is completely reading Marlo. I think he knows Marlo is full of crap and Marlo took out Proposition Joe and it's not Omar because of the interaction um, you know, Slim Charles had with Omar. And Omar ain't about that life. Omar is not hunting for everyone and gunning for everyone like that. Um, you know, you poked the bear and you brought the bear out of hibernation. Um, brought the bear out of a hibernation. Um, so I don't think Slim Charles is going to speak up here because it goes hand in hand with what Kim is saying. The witnesses are afraid to speak out, um, you know, because of what Marlo is capable of doing at the moment with how fast word gets out and how fast word spreads and where word spreads. Look at Randy, for instance. Slim Charles don't want to end up six feet under, so he got to stay quiet. What about the connect? I got that covered. And in light of that fact, I'm going to take it upon myself to conduct this meet. Slim. I want you to take over Hungry Man's slice of the cake. Meaning no disrespect, but I ain't cut out to be no CEO. <laughs> <laughs> At least he acknowledges it. Cheese, then. No problem, man. Got oh. you covered. Until we settle up with Omar, I think it's best we suspend these meats. In fact, I ain't really one for meats no how. Anybody got a problem from here on out? Bring it to me or sit on that Yo, shit. Yo, T-Pain, what up, man? on the west side who need to re-up. I let my man Monk. You gonna handle supply over there on the east side? Oh, uh, Officer Jesus. Smith? Yeah, hundred percent. One more thing. He got it. Price of the brick going up. Thirty more. Just like that. Not enough of this shit. Just like that. That's how you control a meeting. That's how you know you're the top dog. Man, I feel like the only one that can take out Marlo at the moment is either Omar or Avon. But Avon is restricted what? at the moment, man. Next year for the schools. From now until December, we're all about to play at homeless. Great whiting is spoken. I, I love the parallel storylines as well between, um, you know, how they're like, you know, even the news, a uh, sort of like the news agencies, um, they have their sort of um, deadlines or sort of, um, you know, um, they have their forecasts or sort of, yeah, like I said, deadlines or goals for the end of the year. It's like for the remainder of the year, we're doing this. And the police force in seasons four, three, two, whatever, had the same thing, you know, for the remainder of this year, our goal is focusing on, you know, getting this crime rate down below this sort of percentage. And the news thing is doing the same thing here. Um, you know, next year we'll focus on the schools. For the remainder of this year, I want you to hone in on this homeless case. Appealed to Clevin a half an hour ago, but he gave me the thumbs down. I'm sorry. Different institutions. Check Same corruption. People. Our Metro desk has some oh, national God, profile. Suspect. Um, and the suspect. But still, Whitney McGree, it's an incredible moment for any journalist. This is good for his the Washington Post resume. Of pure evil like the son of Sam. That makes you the Jimmy Breslin of Baltimore. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Does he even know who Jimmy Breslin is? You have been in I don't even know, but I'm just saying. Are you at all concerned about continuing mm -hmm. to report from the street? No, not at all. I mean, this is what we do. As a reporter, you expect to be in harm's way at some points. It's what we do. Agreed. Two it's scenes back to back of individuals really seeing through the bullshit of others. And I'm sorry to use that word constantly, but this is what it is. Look at them. Lost in the stars. Too scared to tap the newspaper phones. They might shit on him for it. Man, this season's quality. I keep saying it. more wires. We got all we need. Don't want another wire. It's the principle of the thing. They're doing more with less, like I said. And they're doing it really well. 
Oh yeah. No surveillance cars. <laughs> it won't go beyond me and Greg's. You and Sid Norrell have to work it as best you can for right now. At least Greg's knows her Assholes. murders are connected to Marlo, so that means maybe she can help you if you bring her in and up to speed on what you guys are doing. They need another body, don't they? I'll call our man in the southern. Another body ain't gonna do anything, man. I feel like it. I can take from here, y'all can bounce. Alright, boss. Surely Slim Charles doesn't get taken out because he disrespected. Is that cheese? I thought that was the outline of tea, cheese up, with the do rag. It's like old oh, times, tomorrow. man. You huh? Whatever you want, it's yours, all right? Well, tonight, I'm just gonna take your jump. And leave you with a little something. What's that? My word in your ear. I'm calling Marlo a straight bitch. I'm saying it don't take much to shoot down a blind man. You know, so him stepping to me. You tell that dude he ain't got the heart. All right. You tell that man I'm in the street, waiting. Just like a little bitch, he ain't nowhere to be found. I'll tell him. I will. Pick up your keys and go inside, yo. You killed Joe? Hungry? <laughs> Didn't think so. <laughs> Thank you. That's good news for the co-op, actually. That's what... Oh, that's such a great... Mo uh, bro, every scene with Omar. I want to rewatch it, sorry. Boots, Bale, and Bonds. Can we add Bottle to that, too? Because Omar came behind this guy with a bottle. What up, Rick? It's like old times, man. You, huh? Whatever Rick. you want, it's yours, all right? Well, tonight, I'm just going to take your jump. <laughs> hey, all John Wick needs is a pistol. What's that? My word in your ear. I'm calling Marlo a straight bitch. I'm saying it don't take much to shoot down a blind man. You know, so him stepping to me, you tell that dude he ain't got the heart. Michael All Kenneth right. Williams, man. You tell that man I'm in the street. Cooking. Waiting. Just like a little bitch, he ain't nowhere to be found. I'll tell him. I will. I love how you can hear the anger and pain in his voice as well, how coarse and rough it is, because obviously he's standing on his own two feet at the moment, but we know he's only got, you know, one working leg. Um, and I love how you can hear that pain echo through his voice. Ah, so good. Pick up your keys and go on the side, yo. You killed Joe? Hungry? <laughs> Didn't think so. <laughs> laughing again, man. Laughing. Just straight laughing at how Marlowe's doing things. <laughs> Didn't the governor scrap the emergency medical and housing program last year? Uh, what was it? TDAP. He did. Replaced it with TDAP, which cuts funding to anyone who doesn't qualify for federal support. Oh, these guys are on the same page now. The chemistry. By disallowing new applications, which put all kind of folks out on the street. So, we slammed the Republican for sticking it to the poor. They're going to pin it on the governor. Nationally, you're taking up the cause of the forgotten. And no one is ever in favor of homelessness. Statewide, you're going up against a fellow who tore up the safety net. Homelessness? Huh. I'll be damned. <laughs> Crazy how something McNulty created is going to advance um, or, you know, propel Karketi to, you know, probably a higher position. You see anybody using a cell phone? All the pieces of the puzzle matter. Everyone's uses, using this thing as leverage. Hold on. Somebody's here. used to how empty this place feels nowadays. <laughs> True, but you'd be surprised what you could get done when no one's looking over your shoulder. You'll need to serve these. We're running out of time. Get right on it. There's a couple of loose ends I think we should cover as well. Now? If not now, when? The trial date is coming up on us fast. Right, but it's, uh... <laughs> Is it something I said? Yo, remember, remember when Lester was pushing um, Rhonda to, you know, issue the subpoenas? Remember he was hassling her and she's like, no, no, we should wait out. And they're like, oh my, how the tables have turned. How the turntables. <laughs> no, it's, it's Sid Nora is bringing in a CI. And if you're here. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Um, 
my list, okay? No problem. We'll get right on it. Yep. Sorry. Love I'll get right on it. I was intruding. As soon as I've brought down Marlo Stanfield. It's the boy. He know. He running with them who did it. You just trying to put me off the scent here. No, you mm -hmm. gotta believe me. Mm -hmm. She onto something. Who told me Duval wasn't coming home for we even know he was dead? You said he's running with them. Running with who? Chris knew all them gangsters. Who else doing all the killing around here? Let me see your camera. Oh, so that's what Herc's camera Got ended up. I'm times. joking, I'm joking. Got it? Here it is, look at this. Single ring, connection, silence. What do you have? Took these three. They're just hanging around. It's not what Marlo's saying. It's what he's sending. Look him up. Yeah, text message. Text. Need I remind you, detective, these young men are products of Baltimore City Schools. <laughs> Besides, look how far away he's holding this phone. Too far away to be reading a text. No, son. Pictures. <laughs> Pictures. I swear, Lester's the Dumbledore of this show, man. My guy's wearing the half moon spectacles, like they say in the books with Dumbledore. <laughs> and he knows all, sees all. I'm not lying, we got a fucking serial killer on the loose. Who's he talking to? Is he talking to like that. a billboard? Well, it's in the goddamn paper. A statue? It's drunk McNulty, so. What support do I get? One fucking detective. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> simple ass game's fine. I gotta do what I gotta do. Excuse me. McNulty. Yeah, Oscar. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Where? On my way. That's the same area where Karketi celebrated his win with his wife, right? Um, or where he got the phone call. I think it's similar, that sort of... That pathway or... Um, walking path looking over the harbour. Yo, this guy can't. Bro, this guy's soft, man. You can't let it get you like this. Why don't we go buy up a bunch of toys and take them to your kids? You ain't hearing me. How can I go near my people with Omar on us? How are you gonna find out about them? How we find out about the blind man? Man, even those little short scenes, just great. Just great. Chris repeatedly throwing the knife with sheer accuracy on the floorboards. Money a little late today. <laughs> hey, let the streets know it's Omar. Yo, Omar killing it this episode, man. You got a buck shot in your leg, should help you some. You explain yourself to Marlo. Ask the mother to. They gonna wish I had a pepper them a bit. <laughs> You make sure you tell old Marlo I burn the money. It ain't about that paper. It's about me hurting his people and messing with his world. So tell that boy he ain't mad enough to come down to the street with Omar. He's the Joker. He's John tell Wick. He's everyone. He's the Dark Knight, man. He's Batman. He's calling out Marlo to a 1v1. Listen, there's only one way to settle a 1v1, and that's on Rust and MW2, baby. But yeah, Omar's been absolutely killing it this episode. It's funny how, you know, Marlo left one alive on the scene as well with Butchie with a shot at the leg, and then Omar does the exact same thing to one of uh, Marlo's corner boys. <laughs> Marlo, you 
My sergeant and two side partners got here before me. Then the shift commander showed. Now the duty officer is on his way. For DOA? <laughs> yeah, well, hey, you and Lester started some shit here, son. Yep, they're on it before you could get the body first. You can't tamper with this homeless man. The heat is on, baby. Al Pacino. <laughs> The Nero. When we started this, you said all we needed were some bugs, a, a camera or two, and in a couple of weeks we'd have them. That's what you said. It's more so complicated than that. To pay for that, but no, then you needed a wiretap. So I went along with that. I got you the wiretap, but then you asked for surveillance teams. But before I could get to that, you came to me with this. I mean, what the fuck? I gotta tell you, Lester. I'm I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I can see why Daniel's cringed every time he opens your fucking mouth. Whoa! His nightmare. Look I'm who's talking! Look who's talking! Brother! Who do you think you are? Okay, say so we get you the intercept on your pictures. Will that give us Marlowe? It'll be coded, probably. I'm sure we can break it. That'll tell us how they do business, and usually that's enough. Or not. Look, the truth is, I'm running Sid no ragged, just staying on a couple of mopes and monitoring calls. Now, when we're up on their code, we're gonna need more manpower to run down a stash or a re-up. We can't do it all. I can't juke this thing any more than I have. Last night, half the police department turned up at Oscar's crime scene before I could get there. We can't make another murder. Nah, don't tell me. Don't tell me I think... Look, I'm not looking to shit on another guy's copy. I just want to know he ain't thinking copy. what I'm thinking he's thinking, right? He's not going to stage a murder him and himself, right? Kids never saw a dime. Hmm. Yeah, I'm hoping this is all bullshit. Says all the money went to Atlantic City casinos and the uh, kids never saw a dime. Christ, who the fuck is that? I know, I know. It's probably some old bitty talking about stuff she don't know, but uh, maybe she'll go back and check with the family and see if we don't get took on this, huh? Oh, he getting fraud checked. He getting fraud checked for another story. No, no, not now. After you file. Let's make a couple calls, huh? He getting fraud checked big time. Not even for the current one. This is kidnapping. Actually, I'm not sure. I asked him if he wanted a hundred dollars to go someplace for dinner and talk, and he walked to my car. You give him the hundred? Stuffed it in his jacket. He's fine, Lester. He's great. Think he'll find his way back home? Eventually. By then, we'll be done with Marlowe. We'll be shut this thing down. As far as what happened to this guy, they'll write it off as some fraternity prank. He's a human being, man. No. Even if he figures it out, he's gonna believe him. He's nuts. How do you know he's nuts? First of all, just look at him. He's fucking bouncing off the walls. Second of all, I've got his script. I called the university ER. It's an antipsychotic. He wasn't lying when he said it ain't important CI coming in. I took his ID. We sent photos of this guy, all ribboned up from a dry cell phone to that goofy reporter, along with a Oh, they're staging a kidnapping. I oh. ain't no pervert or whatever. Now says you ain't gonna find no more bodies only photos of the victims before they disappear look at this poor sucker i don't believe we're gonna do this Bro, he disappears the city goes batshit i you never thought intercepts and by the time we need to run down one of marlo's re-ups you got all the manpower you need and marlo falls falls hard why don't you just let omar do the work on marlo Man, I never thought it could get lower than this. Oh, and now we have Lester crossing that pillar from before with Sidno. See? McNulty was the one proposing the illegitimate of the illegitimate. The Mount Everest of illegitimate shit. Don't fucking tell me you mislabeled this too. I want comparisons between known suspects 
and the DNA from this scene. By the looks of it, we got a whole lot of DNA out of this mess. Now, motherfucker, right now. Top of my list. As soon as we work through all the trays from the homeless killings. It's the priority, Bunk. The homeless killings. Everything is backed up behind that. Sorry. He, he knows it. Boy McNulty has everyone's attention right now. Ooh, he wants to hit McNulty, man. Uh, oh, I'm just gonna get it. <laughs> the way he said that with frustration, man. Larry, this is hard to watch. I can't watch this. Like, this is hard to watch. I like this place. It's, it's warm. They got nice sets. I can't. I can't, man. Like. Best of all, I give you cash money just for walking in the door. I can't notice how the the frame the framing right there makes Larry seem much bigger in the frame as well compared to McNulty um how they have him much more in the forefront on the left hand side of the screen it's almost as if it's just it's making the audience it's like making you suffer man it's like for trying clay yourself we should start with our witness lists. See if we can pare that down any. Out of respect for the distracted nature of Baltimore jury. First, there's something else I need to bring up. The indictments. Old grand jury stuff? Sealed indictments, sealed transcripts, dozens of them. Pulled from the desk of a shot-to-death drug dealer in East Baltimore. The deputy ops brought me those. Is he? We have a leak. Is he the leak? It can't be. He would have known Prop Joe is dead by now, right? I, I I think I asked that question when Prop Joe had that scene with getting the sealed indictments or getting those papers. I forgot which politician he was talking to or which person he was talking to. I just wondered to myself, who's the leak at City Hall or the courthouse? Outside where I work. I was confused. I lost, I think. So I, I brought him here. Donald? Where are you from? Donald, do you have identification? Oh man, it's so hard to watch. Man. And he scratched motherfucker. Does that say Cleveland? Donald, why don't we get you something to eat? You know how Omar's calling out Marlo? Can I call out McNulty for a 1v1 fist fight? Because I reckon I'll whoop his ass. Hey, Scotty boy. Hey. Hey. Great piece. I mean, this one really feels like the real deal. It's great work. Thanks. What I like most about it is that you didn't overwrite it. No extra color, no puffy adjectives, just tight declarative sentences. And you really let this ex-Marine just tell the story. Thanks, guys. Hey, Mr. Slotman. Read it and weep. And I mean that literally. Oh, hey, Scott. Was this Marine Did you Man? To, uh, drop a couple calls on that complaint? Yeah, it's bullshit. I talked to people in the neighborhood. Your sister's good people, but there's another woman uh, up there, unrelated. Keeps getting arrested for kiting checks and stuff, and she uh, she uses her sister's name every time she Look gets at Haynes. Up. Look at Haynes. She's done it like three or four times now. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's crazy, but her sister's clean. Everyone says so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Bro, Haynes. He, McNulty can get away with his shit. But Templeton, man, he getting found out hard. Haynes is on him. I, I This is so hard to watch, man. I'm so sorry. Is there anything else I can do for him? No, we've got it. But thanks for bringing him in. Most people, they just ignore them. Do you think McNulty right there had a little bit of remorse for what he was doing? Like he felt ashamed of himself after watching um, Donald for that long? Like maybe a, a slight bit of remorse. Like what the F am I? Like why am I doing this? 
Because his facial expressions did really seem to indicate that right there. Please let it be a moment of realization. Oh, I felt like that was the case right then. That episode was a journey. That episode... Sorry, I accidentally paused my reaction. That episode felt like, a, like, like I said, a journey, man. Like that was... 56 minutes but it felt longer but it didn't feel longer like it felt like like i said typical wire with so much um being jam-packed into one episode and i just feel like it felt longer because i paused to speak so much because i didn't want to you know um talk over important dialogue and miss important interactions with characters um because i feel like like i said i've been saying it for time with the wire every piece of the puddle uh Every piece of the puzzle matters, and yeah, I don't want to miss out on that hidden detail or like that one word, that one phrase, that one sentence that comes back, um, you know, in future episodes to mean something. We can't do that, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a fantastic episode yet again. So much that happened, and um, like I said, that that stuff with Donald at the end. Um, I don't know if it's just me. But I just feel like that was really hard to watch, in my opinion. Um, that that's just that's just that's, that's just me. Um, I don't know what it is. I just I it, I feel so sorry for him. Um, yeah, that's just it, it was just really 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 hard to watch. Um, and especially from a character like McNulty, who we followed, um, through the entire show. Um, and I thought he hit the lowest of the lows already this season. Um, but to think of something like this to go that to don't go that extra length again, like it's just it's just like someone really hates the character McNulty in the writer's room. I'm telling you. What the heck, man? What the heck? Like, oh my gosh. Um anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. As always, Vinny Brother Moses, take care, God bless, peace.